Hey guys, Alex from 7th Hour Films back again with Sailor Moon. Uh, let's see, last time around, uh, in the movies, we watched Sailor Moon R the movie, where uh, an old flame, or an old flower, I guess, of Mamoru showed back up, and uh, there was conflict there until finally they defeated the parasite controlling him and saved the world. Yay! Uh, last time, in our manga reviews, we covered the Infinity Arc, uh, which introduced... Well, three Incredible Sailors, and reintroduce the Incredible Sailor, Sailor Pluto, um, while also giving us some, uh, let's face it, some lackluster villains, but it was okay, because who cares about them when we have Sailor Uranus, Sailor Neptune, Sailor Pluto, and Sailor Saturn, so, yeah. This time around, we're watching Sailor Moon S, the movie. Uh, now, actually, interesting thing. Uh, last time around in the manga reviews, uh, the last side chapter that I was talking about was, what was it, The Love of Princess Kaguya or something? Um, and I said that I didn't finish it. Well, interesting thing. Uh, I think, if I'm correct, that this movie is actually based on that chapter, uh, which is interesting. Uh, which, I, I only know that because I've been basically spending uh I, I spent a little bit of this morning trying to track down the 27 or the 2018 viz dub of the movie so yes um so yeah as i was looking for it uh, i did happen to catch a brief little plot synopsis not anything spoilery just that it is based on that chapter which hey i didn't finish that chapter uh where last i left off uh luna was on the plane on the wing of a plane somehow God, I hope we get to see that in this movie, see that animated. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, which, that was an interesting chapter, too. So, I'll be curious to see how that will be adapted into a movie, necessarily. Because it wasn't really a conflict-driven uh, plot, I don't think. So, yeah. We'll be, it'll be interesting to see how it's adapted uh, into here. Uh, once again, like Sailor Moon R, the movie, this is the Viz dub. This is not the original dub. This is the newest dub of Sailor Moon S, the movie, because we are trying to get things as close to accurate as possible without just going back to the Japanese sub version. Uh, which I could have. If there wasn't a dub, I would have gone back to that. Um, or if there wasn't a recent dub. I don't think I can... I don't think I can bring myself to watch the original dubs, um, because they're just so ridiculous. Um, although that would probably be kind of fun for the reaction, but oh well. Uh, but yes, this is the Viz dub. Like always, uh, for my anime reactions, the link to watch the reaction is down in the description and in the pinned comment for your viewing pleasure. So all you have to do is go down, click on that link, and it will take you to, over to the reaction, and it's just a normal reaction. And because this is a movie reaction, like always, the full length is available over at my Patreon page for $5 patrons to go check that out. If you don't want to, though, just well, go to the other link, and that will take you to the reaction. And then, whether you watch the reaction or the full length, be sure you head right back over to this video so that you can watch my discussion. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get right into Sailor Moon S, the movie. Here we go. Alrighty, that is Sailor Moon S, the movie. Well, um... You know, I didn't, like I said, I didn't finish reading the chapter that this is based on, The Love of Princess Kaguya. Although, you know, I remember seeing, at the beginning, seeing, you know, the cover which has a, it just has Luna as a human. But you don't know that yet. So, you, so it is interesting when they started talking about making Luna a human, I thought, wait a second, maybe that's the cover of that chapter. And sure enough, it is. So... I am going to look up the voice cast of the movie. Well, I looked up um, who played Kakeru and uh, Himiko. Um, okay, well, I, I don't really recognize the names, though. Oh, well. So, alrighty. Well, I mean, again, I don't really know how the chapter ends, per se, but... For it to be adapted into this, you know, pretty substantial movie is very interesting. Yeah, and this was, I think this was about 10 minutes longer. I think, was this 10 minutes longer? It might not be 10 minutes longer than the last one. Uh, might be about the same length, but, um, but yeah, like, it, it's very interesting how they did adapt this chapter. 
uh, into this movie, you know? Now, unfortunately, we didn't get the, uh, the imagery of Luna sitting on the wing of a plane. Um, so I'm assuming that there is a point where the story sort of diverges from uh, the chapter. Uh, but this was good. This was honestly really, really good. I mean, which we said about the last one, too, you know? I've really... I've really been enjoying watching these movies, you know? And like I've said before, you know, I'm also going through the anime right now, but, you know, very slowly. I'm still in the first season. I'm very close to the end, but I'm still in the first season of the anime. So it's so nice to get, you know, it's so nice to sort of jump ahead a little bit to where I am in the manga, you know? And I get to see, you know, uh, the Outer Guardians being animated and stuff, uh... So, that's all really nice and good. Um, so, yeah, I've just, I don't know, I've been really enjoying And the quality of these movies, I feel like, maybe is a little bit better than the anime. Because the anime, I would kind of say, is... The anime is good, but I almost feel like it's just a... It's a really good Saturday morning cartoon, you know? Like, that's kind of what the anime feels like. But these, these honestly feel a little bit better. Like, these are closer to the manga, you know? Which I like. And maybe that's because they don't have... The, the movies don't have so much filler, you know? So, we can go ahead and hop into the notes on this one. The first thing I wrote down is Luna and uh, Kakeru. Um, which is interesting, you know? Uh, I feel like... I feel like I understood this maybe a bit better in the movie than in the manga. In the manga, there were so many... <sighs> In the chapter itself, there were times where I was just like, I don't know what the hell is happening. Like, who are these people? Like, why are we here? And they would, like, go on for pages on end about something. But I didn't, I don't know. Like, it, it just, like, didn't, it didn't click with me or something like that. You know, I was, I was more just like, okay, why is Luna here? You know, who is, who is this guy? You know, I, I don't know. It was hard for me to, like... I don't want to say, like, pay attention in that chapter, but, I mean, to an extent, it, like, they would just go on and on about all this stuff, and it's like, okay, so here's this guy, he's an astronaut, but he's not an astronaut, and there's something that prevented him, and then they couldn't, you know, you know, he's got his girlfriend, but she's trying to be an astronaut, but then they push her away, and that, all of that was a bit confusing in the actual chapter. Here, it is, it is made a bit more... Uh, it, it's made a bit better just with how the dialogue is delivered in the movie. So, uh, but yeah, so Luna and Kakeru, uh, they do change how uh, they meet because in the in the manga, um, in the manga, she specifically like, you know, she has to go get Artemis basically and she ends up getting uh, attacked by those kids and they put the band-aid over her uh over her crescent, she starts losing her powers until eventually Kakadu finds her. I like that they sort of sped up the process here, um, which is good. So, yeah. I do like... I, I do have to say, I like... <sighs> Kakadu is an interesting character because he definitely... Like, the whole thing of, you know, okay, he's a scientist. He has, like, eight PhDs and so much different... So many different, you know, sciences and medicines and engineering and stuff like that. Um, but I like that he, like, he does this because of his fantasies, basically, you know? Now, some of it, yes, he he is driven by, like, oh, he saw he saw the, the goddess on the moon, the moon goddess, you know? Um, and he's kind of become a laughingstock because of that. Now, I'm curious, when he saw... When he thought he saw Princess Kaguya, was that specifically when the when Sailor Moon and the gang went to? Uh, well, no. Well, I don't know. Was it when uh, when Usagi and the gang went to the moon during the Dark Kingdom arc? But maybe not because that didn't even happen in the anime. At least not yet. And we're running out of episodes for it to happen. So. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's that. Because they say, like, yeah, he he says he saw the moon goddess. And so because of that, he kind of became a laughing stock, which is kind of strange. But it's just interesting because it's like, okay, you know, how many kids... How many kids are out there 
that see these, you know, fantastical things in movies or something, or they even just look out at space and they their imagines start taking off, you know? You know, as like I'll I'll admit when I was a kid and when I was in school, okay, when I was in school, I didn't really like science class. I was not a science kid. I could never get into it. I thought it was boring. Um, but the one time I ever really paid attention in a science class was when we were talking about astronomy and space and everything. That was the most interesting stuff. I remember even when I was in college, uh, it was like freshman or maybe was it maybe sophomore year. I don't remember, but it, it must have been freshman year now that I think about it. Freshman year of college, I took a science course. And again, one of the most boring classes I ever took in my life. I could not have checked out harder uh, with that class. Um, but I swear to you, on the very last day of teaching in that class... We talked about astronomy and space and everything, and I was riveted. I was so riveted by it. So I just sat there. And I was like, oh, dude, this is awesome. But it was only one day. And that's the thing. So I've always loved I, I've always loved learning about space and everything. I think space is really cool. That's why, honestly, I kind of like all the Sailor Guardians are named after different planets, you know, um, because they're all just very interesting. Um, and that's also why I like shows like Star Trek, even Star Wars and Doctor Who, like all these shows that go out into space. That's really interesting to me, you know? So how many kids are, how many kids are there that are inspired by something, maybe even like Sailor Moon or Doctor Who or Star Trek or Star Wars or all these things where, you know, space is just at the forefront or kids that literally just go outside at night and look at the stars, if they can see them you know, look at the stars or look at the moon and they get inspired. And so they have all these fantasies and maybe some of them, you know, get into being an astronaut and studying space and everything and working at an observatory like Kakeru. So that's pretty interesting because that sort of also puts a divide between Kakeru and Himiko because Himiko is more on, is more on the just science. Like, you know, she looks at the moon and, and she just sees a rock in space, you know, according to Kakadu. But he looks at it and he sees this fantastical celestial object out there, you know? So, it's interesting because you would almost think... Well, you would almost think it would be more of a mixture, you know? Because, like, there should be, like, a happy medium where you would think most scientists, you know, who study space would be, or most astronomers would be. Because... Because... Yeah, you know, a lot of, I, I feel like a lot of astronomers, they look at these things like, oh my gosh, look at that and this and that, and, you know, you look at like, let's say Saturn, for example, because Saturn is actually one of my favorite uh, planets, which is also why I really loved Sailor Saturn in The Last Ark. Uh, but you look at Saturn, it's like, oh my god, that thing is fucking beautiful, you know? It's like, oh, look at this, and the colors, and the rings, you know? It's so, the rings that are so prominent on Saturn and everything, you look at that, and it's like, wow, that's incredible. And yes... A scientist also probably looks like, okay, so how do these rings, you know, work? You know, they're, they're this one. It's like, okay, you know, are there differences here? Oh, there's an interesting thing going on, like, at this point in, at Saturn. It's like, so I feel like there should be this, like, happy medium between them, you know? Whereas Kakeru is more just on the fantasy side. He looks at the moon, it's like, that looks like a goddess. Whereas Himiko looks at it, it's like, that is a rock. And I'm going to go stand on it. I don't know. Um, so that's the sort of interesting thing that I guess they almost sort of need to learn to sort of bring those two mindsets together, which I feel like Kakeru has to do that. He, he must have had to do that earlier in order to have this job at all. But I don't know. It's so interesting. So the fact that he's kind of like, you know, they, they, they kind of cast him aside, you know, even Himiko to an extent, they sort of cast him aside because of his fantasies. Like, well, yeah, okay, saying, oh, I saw... Yeah, okay, you know what it almost should be? It's like, oh, I saw the moon goddess. You know, I, I saw Princess Kaguya on the moon. They should all probably think, well, okay, you saw something, clearly, you know? Clearly you saw something, what is it, you know? It's like, um... I, I remember someone once saying that uh, they don't, like... When it comes to ghosts, they don't believe in ghosts. But they believe that something has... Like, ghost stories do happen and something causes it, just not necessarily ghosts. 
And they said, like, as an example, it's like, yeah, I'm sure if you tell me that you saw this, you know, Victorian child, you know, at the end of your bed, I believe you. But it's, but he's saying basically, it's not a ghost, but something is causing you to see that at the end of your bed, you know? So I almost feel like these scientists should be like, well, okay, is Princess Snow Kaguya on the moon? Maybe not. But he saw something up there, you know? Which is also, you can sort of say at the end, when Himiko does see uh, the two of them at the moon, she really just sees this sort of beam of light. And she looks at it, and she, but she just assumes, she says, that's when she believes, like, oh, that must be it. That must be what he sees. That's the snow princess he's always seen, you know? So it's, it's very interesting. It's a very interesting sort of dynamic with... Kakeru and Himiko and their views on space and everything. Um, so, yeah. Um, let's see. And then the whole thing of, you know, Luna... Okay, the the almost love triangle, kind of? I don't know. You, I guess you could sort of say that is a... Maybe a love triangle between... Uh, between... I'm blanking on all their names immediately. Luna, Kakeru, and Himiko. For some reason, the thought couldn't form in my head. It's kind of weird. You know, like, it's interesting. Well, I, I don't know. Like, I... I don't know. It's not bad. But it's one of those things, like, I have to stop and, like, keep thinking about it every so often. Where it's like, okay, well, you know, he... Uh, you know, Luna likes him. He, obviously, he doesn't really think about that. Because he doesn't know how... Well, obviously all cats are sentient, but, you know, she is a, you know, more human-like cat, you know? But it's also one of those things where it's like, you know, oh, well, you know, Himiko, she should be caring for him. Well, if I was a human, I could care for him. And it's like, well, but if you were a human, then they, you would try, I don't know. It's a whole thing, basically. But it's not, you know, it's not bad. Maybe it's one of those, like, if you overthink it, like, it, it sort of falls apart. So maybe we just need to not, overthink it as much you know so th that that could entirely be the problem here is that i'm overthinking it um but i mean the the scenes between luna and kakeru are incredibly adorable you know i i, I really did like that and you genuinely that you do feel how how much luna cares for him and honestly how much kakeru cares for her you know it's like you you do feel the attachment between them so that i i, I do really like um, and then we also have, uh, unfortunately for Artemis, but, uh, it's an interesting thing of, you know, it's basically Luna falls in love with a human and she can't basically, she can't go anywhere with that. She loves him, but she is a cat. It just, nothing will sort of happen. And eventually once, basically the rest of the movie is she has to take care of him, make sure he's okay, save him. And get him back to the person, you know, the human that loves him, you know? And so, it, it, I, I guess it's sort of a, if you love them, let them go sort of thing. So, I guess it is sort of that. And then at the end, you know, she goes back to Artemis, basically. Um, uh, so, I like that. And yeah, you know, when they, when they all start talking, it's like, oh, Luna's in love. And Artemis is just heartbroken. It's like... Uh, I do like that Minako uh, immediately realizes uh, that he's heartbroken about that and she tries to change the subject, you know? So, I did like that, that she she completely knows what Artemis is feeling. Um, so, I like that. And, and then, yeah, at the end, you know, Artemis goes back to her and is like, hey, I'm, I'm always here if you need me. And it's like, ugh. He's such a good boy, you know? It makes sense, honestly, that he's played by Johnny and Bosch because he is just as good of a boy as Jonathan Joestar is, uh, who is also voiced by Johnny and Bosch, you know? They're good boys, you know? Even Albert is sort of a... is kind of a good boy, who is also voiced by Johnny and Bosch in Gankutsuo, The Count of Monte Cristo. Uh, you know what? Does Johnny and Bosch specifically play good boys? It could be that. I haven't seen Johnny and Bosch in anything else, so I'm just going to assume he always plays a good boy. Like how Matt Mercer always plays the same voice, you know? Johnny and Bosch always plays a good boy. Matt Mercer always always sort of plays the 
Jotaro kind of character, you know? So, um, so yeah. But I did like that, the whole thing uh, with Artemis and him, him waiting for her and there when she needs him, you know? So I like that. Um, uh, the only other thing... Okay, so the only other thing about uh, Kakeru and Himiko that I thought was kind of weird was the secrets. Like, I, I guess... I guess Kakeru was worried that, you know, if he was... If he showed that he was sick and everything, that... Well, no, because she already knew, but if... Basically, the reason that he pushed Himiko away was that she would go back to America and uh, and would go and be an astronaut. I, I think that's basically it, you know? Um, which I kind of thought was weird, you know? It's like... Which I guess, like, if he revealed how sick he was, but also, if he revealed that he loved her, then likely she would stay behind and not go out and live her dream as well as his dream, you know? So I guess that's why uh, he pushed her away. I thought it was kind of weird, you know? But I guess it was more of a... He, he wanted her to go. You know, he wanted her to go and be an astronaut. Um, whereas I almost feel like if you told the truth, that could have worked as well. Like, if he had said the truth, like, hey... Yes, you know, I'm, I'm not feeling great, but I'll be, you know... Because he didn't really know the extent of it. Although, he kind of said he was dying, so that might not have worked. But if he said, hey, I love you, now go live your dream. Like, that could have... Uh, maybe that could have worked, but I don't know. So that whole thing was... It was kind of weird in the moment, but I guess I understand it, you know? Um, let's see. In terms of some of the other stuff we got going on... Uh, we got the uh, Freeze Ladies. What were they called? The Snow Dancers. Uh, the villain in this, interesting. Uh, the pretty simple villain, you know. Uh, where last time with Fiore, he was definitely a prominent villain, um, and the the story was mainly about him. Whereas they sort of take a, a swap on this one um, with, uh, I guess, the False Kaguya is how we could uh, put it. Um, I guess I don't know. I don't. I don't know what to call her. Actually, I'm not. Eh. Uh, we'll just say Ice Queen. We'll just say that. Um, so yeah, the the whole thing with her, while it was interesting, it was just sort of a uh, step. It, it was a step back from Fiore, which is fine because it did the movie. The movie didn't need to be about her. You know, it just it needed to be about um, everything with Kakeru and Luna, and the whole thing with uh, the Ice Queen was just sort of added on for more conflict, you know, and to give the Sailor Guardians something more to do, basically. So, um, so yeah, like that, so she was good, not the greatest villain we've ever had, although when you stack her up against the manga villains, she's pretty good, you know. Pretty simple, though, very, very simple, she wants to come in, freeze the earth, add it to her collection, and yeah, pretty simple, but still worked. Um, I like that, uh, well, okay, Tuxedo Mask's entrance was incredible. I love it. Okay, you know, I, I would like at some point for him to use his freaking Tuxedo Bomber move, you know, because he hasn't used that yet, and I want to see it actually, like, in the anime, Cause it's the one, it's the one attack he has in the manga is, you know, that tuxedo la smoking bomber, you know, like I, I want to see him do that. But first off, I love that cause his entrances are always ridiculous. So I love that he literally dressed up as Santa Claus, got on a blimp, flew the blimp over through the rows and then just came out as, and he was tuxedo mask. He's like, Oh shit. And then on top of that, Lahayam, and he just throws a dreidel at them. I, d I did not expect that. I didn't expect Tuxedo Mask to come in here and attack them with, you know, dreidels for Hanukkah. You know, it's like, all right, cool. That's, that's great. You got any other, 
Like, I, I guess Tuxedo Mask, you know, is getting very multicultural. It's like, you got anything for, I don't know, Ramadan? Do they have anything? I don't know. I'm very, I'm very, uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? What's the word that describes me being an idiot? Um, I guess I'm just uninformed about uh, other holidays in December. So I have a vague understanding of Hanukkah and, well, I mean, I, I, I love Christmas, you know? I'm a Christmas boy. Um, so yeah, it's like, I, I celebrate Christmas. I don't really celebrate anything else. I am not Jewish or anything else. So, um, but I, but yeah, I don't know if there is anything that he could have thrown from Ramadan. I'm really guessing, by the way, I'm really praying that, uh, Ramadan is celebrated in December. If not, I'm going to look like an asshole. Now I got to look. Oh, I got a calendar up on the wall. Go check. Ugh. Damn it. I was wrong. So am I just completely wrong? I think I'm just completely wrong. God damn it. Is it, wait, is it even on this calendar? Wait a second. The hell? I didn't even see it. I couldn't even see it on the cal- Alright, now I gotta look it up. Son of a- Well, okay, I, so I was wrong, but it was not on my calendar at all. Well, I am Boo Boo the Fool. I am Boo Boo the Fool. I said shit that I didn't... See, that's also how uninformed I am about that. Now I look like a jackass. Uh, anyway, he threw a dreidel. I thought that was funny. So, what else do we got? Other than that, uh, it, again, it was nice seeing... Uh, it was nice seeing the Outer Guardians in animation, because... I'm not there yet, and apparently it's it's gonna be a while before I get there in my watch of the anime. Um, but yeah, that was really cool. Uh, nice to see all of them, um, especially Pluto. Let's just be honest, especially Pluto because Pluto's my favorite. Um, although I would love to see some Sailor Saturn in animation. Um, I don't know, maybe we'll get her in the in the third movie, but it depends on how the fourth arc goes. So I'll have to see. We'll have to check back on that later. Um, but yeah, um, the climax was also interesting, uh, with the beam struggle. I never thought I would see a beam struggle in Sailor Moon, you know? Like, that was really, really cool. So, um, this brand Ice Queen thing is really powerful, apparently. But yeah, that beam struggle was very, very cool. Uh, I like that. I love, you know, Sailor Moon using her Jesus powers and becoming Super Sailor Moon. Uh, that was pretty cool. Um... And then we had uh, Human Luna, which was interesting. And yeah, I, I, like, I was like watching this, like, I'm not sure how to feel about this. Like, it's like, well, obviously they've they've made her a really cute human girl. And it's like, eh, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know how to feel about this, you know? So, yeah. Um, but yeah, but I did like that. And I like that moment with uh, her and Kakeru. Uh, it, it was just a nice, sweet moment, you know? Um, so yeah, and then going back to Artemis and him being such a good boy, you know? So, I did like all that. Um, I guess that's basically it. Uh, I thought there would have been a bit more notes, but no, it's kind of just that. Um, again, a really good movie. I really enjoyed it. Um, these movies are honestly, I think these movies are kind of better than the anime. Which is interesting, because like... You know, again, I knew that these movies were going to be like the DBZ movies, where they were just, you know, sort of one-off little things, and, you know, oh, they're cool, but, you know, whatever, and stuff. But these, so far, and granted, because I'm only one arc into the anime, I think, honestly, right now, the movies are better than the anime. Um, but, yeah, which I, I couldn't have said that about DBZ. Like, that, that's definitely not something I would have said about uh, the DBZ movies. Um, so yeah, I've really enjoyed this one. Uh, join us back next week as I will be reviewing the fourth arc of the manga, which is the dream arc, which I believe is chapters 39 to 49. Uh, and then join us back in two weeks where we will be covering the last of the Sailor Moon movies, Sailor Moon Super S the movie. Um, cause these names are just so creative, you know? Sailor Moon Super S, the movie, we'll be watching that. Again, it'll be the Viz dub, um, assuming I find it. It was a little difficult to find the, the Viz dub of this, but 
but I did, so uh, hopefully we will be able to find the Viz dub of Sailor Moon Super S the movie. Um, and yeah, I guess that's that's pretty much that. Nothing really else to say. Good movie, really enjoyed it, and I'm curious to see where we're going in the next arc and the next movie. So with all that being said, I'm Alex from 7th Hour Films, and I will see you guys next time. Take care. Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. If you want to watch more of my Sailor Moon uh, reviews and reactions, there is a playlist that you can click on. There's also a Patreon link if you want to go over to that. There's also the subscribe button if you haven't done that already. Plus there should be another button to go to another playlist or video or something. Check out other stuff, leave a like, all that stuff that uh, people ask you to do. Do all that stuff. See you guys later.